Hey guys, Aaron here. Are you bored with the default borders that the Super NES Classic comes with? I must admit, they are a little lacklustre, but fear not, there is a way of getting custom borders onto the system. Now, it might look a little tricky, but following my guide you should be up in no time with a bunch of custom created borders. I'm not going to go into too much detail of creating your own, but perhaps by checking out the borders in more detail, you will figure out how to create your own. Firstly, you're going to need an FTP client. I recommend downloading FileZilla and you can find that link down below under the video itself in the description. You're going to be using FileZilla to transfer the custom borders between your computer and your Super NES Classic. Just download the FileZilla client, don't worry about the pro version, the standard one's completely free, and then just run it to install it to your PC. Ok, so now we actually want to be downloading some custom borders. If you check down below under the video, in the description, there will be a few links to Google Drives. I'm just going to click the top link here. Now actually, before we start downloading the custom themes, we need to download one file, which is the P8173. You can also find this file in the video description as well if you miss it. Ok, so now it's simply a case of finding the borders that you want to download and clicking the little download icon. Once you've downloaded all of these borders, you might want to keep them all in one place. Also, you're going to need to unzip them as well. As you can see, I've put all of my new borders into a folder called New Backgrounds, like so. And if I go back here, you'll also be able to see that I've saved that P8173 file as well. Now I've just loaded up Hatchy 2 here, if you haven't already hatched your Super NES Classic, I'd advise going back checking out one of my other videos. I'm going to assume that you've got to this stage that you've uploaded your custom firmware, so simply just press power on your Super NES Classic. You should also notice the little red icon in Hatchy 2 turning green to let you know it's connected. Now go to the menu bar up top, select tools, go down to where it says FTP server. If you left mouse button click here, it will put a tick. This just means that now you can actually connect to your system via FTP. It also gives some other information here, don't worry, I'm going to go through that in a second. Now, if you load up FileZilla, you should be presented with a screen like this. Now, on the left-hand side of the screen here, that's actually where all my files are, so you can just navigate to where your folder of the backgrounds is. Next up, we're actually going to want to connect to your Super NES Classic now, so if you click into the Hosts area, just type in 127.0.0.1. In the username, you want to put in root. In the password, you want to type in clover. In port, you want to put 1021, click quick connect and you'll be connected. So this is the file system of your Super NES Classic, so we're going to want to do some changes now. So firstly, click the etc folder, click the preinit.d, and what you actually want to do here is copy over the P8173 file, drag it over, just drop it in. You only actually need to do this once. Let's click back. And again and what we want to do now is actually find the actual uh, backgrounds or the borders so click the USR folder click the share button click the backgrounds and these are actually all the borders that come built in as default as you can see there's 11 so we're going to come out of here I'm going to actually select the entire backgrounds folder and drag them over into the left hand side. As you can see they've appeared on my hard drive here. Now this can actually take a few seconds, nothing major. Once this is done, click the VAR folder, click the LIB or lib, click the Hatchy folder, click root FS, click USR or user, click the share. And then what you actually want to do here is drag the backgrounds folder that you did actually just drag over to your computer. Putting this back in this area just means that you can add additional custom borders to it and edit them. Now this does take a few seconds again, but once you've done it, you will see your backgrounds folder has now appeared in this area. Once it's actually finished though, double click the backgrounds folder. As you can see, this is the 11 default borders that you do get with the system. Now, over on the left, find the borders that you've already downloaded. 
as you can see I've got four custom borders here now what I actually want to do is select all of them and just drag them over onto the right hand side of the screen and drop them again it might take a few seconds depending on how many custom borders you are adding it's also worth noting that you must make sure that the actual folder number is different to every other folder in this area now that is pretty much it. All you need to do now is turn off the power on your Super NES Classic and try it out on a TV. Now all you need to do is select your custom border and you're good to go. Now if you want to add some more custom borders in the future or remove ones you've already added, all you need to do is follow this guide again, connect to your Super NES Classic via the FTP software and then just navigate back to that area with the backgrounds in. Now you won't need to actually worry about uploading that P8173 file again in the future unless of course you do do a factory reset of the system. I think that just about wraps this video up. Now if you are interested in making your own custom borders, just take a look at the ones you've already downloaded, see if you can figure it out how it was made. If you're good at Photoshop, you really shouldn't have any issues with this. Maybe in the future, if there is enough demand, I might cover it in a video. In any case, if you did enjoy this video, maybe give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel as well, it would be amazing if you could subscribe. Thanks for watching.